Hey, it's Huck. And first, just let me apologize for the fact that I have not posted anything on this, my uh, politically oriented channel, in quite some time. Now, you know, when I have had time to post something to YouTube, I've done so a little bit more regularly on my main channel. Uh, here's my most recent video. Uh, here's one or two others that I've posted in recent weeks. And I hope if you haven't already, maybe you'll find a moment to check some of those out. I kind of got some bad news this week. Um, I lost my job. So um, I will be needing a lot of time to, you know, apply for work just about everywhere I can. I've got a very short window in which I desperately need to find another job. And, uh, but this is the holidays. Uh, not a whole lot of job hunting I can do, at least today, Christmas Eve, and tomorrow. So I wanted to, well, kick things off on this channel once again by uh, addressing something that's been in the news quite a bit, and that's that uh, whole controversy over Phil Robertson's comments in GQ magazine. Phil Robertson, of course, being the head of the uh, Duck Dynasty family, um, and uh, I guess the most popular. <laughs> it was my dog getting into something there that he shouldn't have probably got into. For those of you who don't remember, this is my dog Gigi. Say hello to our audience there, Gigi. These are, uh, these are our friends over there um, who watch us on YouTube. Um, I guess where I'd like to start with this is, uh, you know, I found it interesting that after these comments came out and uh, I found his comments to be uh, perhaps more vile and objectionable than, than maybe some of you do. I found his comments on, on gays and on black people equally offensive and equally a sign of really ignorance. First let me say that there was really nothing that Mr. Robertson said that surprised me. I think it was Saturday Night Live that said, uh, showed a picture of Mr. Robertson and said, hey, you know, we learned this week that uh, sometimes you can judge a book by its cover. That's why I say there's nothing that Mr. Robertson said uh, about the gay lifestyle or about blacks, you know, growing up in southwest Missouri or what is it, Louisiana, when he was growing up in the in the 50s uh, or 60s that, that surprised me. Now, the thing about these folks that really riles me is that um, it's funny which sins in the Bible they s seem to pick and choose. I mean I don't see anybody getting riled up over the same provisions in Leviticus for instance that say that uh, you know we should be uh, probably boycotting McDonald's for serving bacon cheese McDoubles. Uh, we should be stoning to death you know, anyone that eats, what, anything that uh, comes from a pig or a goat or any other kind of um, cloven animal, we're not supposed to um, tolerate anyone who dishonors the Sabbath. I mean, if you work on Sunday, you're supposed to be stoned to death. If your children backdock you or dishonor you, disrespect you, um, you know, this is grounds to kill them. I don't see anybody uh, selecting those sins out of the Bible. It, it always seems to be the ones, uh, you know, conveniently that have to do with um, homosexuality. Now, I don't know. Um, I think there's other things in the Bible they could probably get a whole lot more upset about. You know, Jesus never mentions homosexuality once in the New Testament. Not once in Scripture does Jesus address that. Um, but he talks about the poor relentlessly. Yet I don't see any of these folks who so steeped in Bible training that are outraged when we take away the few safety nets like food stamps, like medical cards that we give to the very, very poor in this country. And trust me, you have to be very, very poor to get those benefits. I don't see anyone really on the far right or the 
fundamentalist Christian movement who is outraged that that uh, government, you know, ha has been trying to do these things. If anything, um, they support those actions. So I'm not buying the argument that Robertson's given you here that, hey, I'm, I'm following the Bible. Bullshit. You either accept all of it or you accept none of it. But you can't pick and choose what's a sin and ignore the others. I say that because I think in both cases where he was um, talking about uh, you know his views of the gay lifestyle and um, his opinion of um, what it was like to be black uh, you know back in the 50s or early 60s when he was growing up as a as a young man in uh, I guess southwest Louisiana um, in both cases his comments reflect uh, a person uh, of mild intolerance at best and of, of ignorance. It, the immediate impact of those comments before really any of these outside groups, special interest groups for instance that would you know normally jump to defend uh, gays or minority rights uh, in some way before they even had a chance to really jump on this um, several things happened apparently uh, the A&E network immediately uh, probably sensing you know what was to come they suspended him indefinitely from the network and um, this Duck Dynasty um, empire has grown so enormously since this show took to the air that uh, I know, one, uh, the merchandise that these guys, this family, um, produces, the duck calls or whatever, the gear, you know, for duck hunters or whatever, um, the amount of those things that they're selling, the, the dollar amount of those things that they're selling has exploded in the years since this show has been on the air. So uh, the a &E Network is largely responsible for building this Duck Dynasty empire. Uh, but beyond that, um, even that is probably dwarfed by the merchandising that so many people are taking advantage of. Um, I mean, you can't walk into uh, any gas station, I don't think, from coast to coast, um, un told numbers of uh, retail stores, whether they're Walmarts or whatever, are selling Duck Dynasty pillows and Duck Dynasty t-shirts and pretty much anything they can slap a picture of these guys, you know, on and, and, and sell. And, uh, you know, in this family, these guys, they're, they're making a, a buck, I'm sure, on every one of these doggone items. So we're talking about a multi-million dollar, if not a billion dollar empire now. Now, having said that, I am not surprised either that within days of this controversy coming to light and uh, so many of our redneck friends uh, coming to Mr. Robertson's defense in all of this and all of the usual suspects on the religious and political right, well, it does not astonish me at all that the A&E Network Cracker Barrel and who knows who else has uh, suddenly completely caved in and uh, rather than stand on any principle that could possibly be used as a teaching moment here um, instead they intend to cash in and screw it you know he's gonna be back on the air these products are still gonna be out in the, in the stores and uh, I guess that's the almighty dollar at work once again. I heard an interesting argument that uh, perhaps we shouldn't um, be so hard on Mr. Robertson. That uh, I've heard many people say that, hey, there was no hate intended. You know, he finished his uh, comments on, on these topics by basically saying, hey, you know, who am I to judge let God sort them out. Well, 
You know, I don't believe Mr. Robertson is all that innocent in all this. And I quite honestly don't believe he's as ignorant as he would have us believe. Um, ignorance is one thing. Ignorance generally comes when um, you haven't had any real life experience with something. And oftentimes, uh, attitudes change as we come into contact with certain people or certain things that up until that time were beyond our experience. And I think that's why, you know, we see so much more tolerance today for the gay um, marriage issue. It's because so many more gay people, men and women, have come forward. And now there's very few people, I think, who um, don't know someone personally, if not in their own family, um, in, in a friend's family or a neighbor's. And I think this is something that we've, um, as we grow closer as a community and get to know people a little bit better and better understand the issues they're struggling to you know, work through, I think uh, we begin to have more sympathy. Uh, we're able to better put ourselves in their shoes. But you're never going to turn everybody around. And where I take great issue with uh, Mr. Robertson is, like I say, I don't believe he's nearly as ignorant as he um, purports to be. In my opinion, uh, you can't, you cannot have lived those years in southwest Louisiana and have been um, completely unaware of the laws, you know, that um, separated black and white people in almost all situations that forbid black people from staying at virtually any roadside motel, from eating in virtually any downtown restaurant, from using any public restroom, from, uh, you know, there, there were just, in the day-to-day -day things, you cannot say that these things existed, you were aware of them, and yet black people were perfectly happy with it. That, that goes beyond ignorance. Uh, I think we're in the realm now of revisionist history. and. There's no doubt in my mind that when Robertson made these comments in GQ magazine, he had a very good idea uh, of just who his core audience was. And uh, I don't think he probably ever thought it would blow up to the uh, extent that it has. But I have no doubt that he knew who he was talking to and he knew how they would digest those comments. And uh, to suggest that he wasn't spreading hatred, uh, when you mock someone, uh, I don't know what word you use for it, uh, but it's not showing love. So I was pretty outraged at what he had to say. Not a bit surprised. And frankly, I don't think it's going to do um, anything but probably um, enhance his uh, revenue uh, machine because that's, uh, that's who was buying a lot of this merchandise to begin with. Um, but let's not kid ourselves. He knew exactly what he was doing. So I'm kind of offended that... Uh, once again, we see the almighty dollar speaks louder than principle. Uh, I think this was a missed opportunity. And um, I, for one, uh, never watched Duck Dynasty. And, um, you know, I don't know whether boycotting a networker or that really does that much good. Um, because if you're going to, if we're going to divide you know, I mean, I don't watch Fox Network, uh, certainly not regularly, but once in a while I'll tune in just to see what nonsense they're spewing. Um, likewise, I suspect that there are some regular Fox viewers that watch MSNBC once in a while, um, you know, for the same reason. 
to um, to boycott for me to boycott Fox isn't going to hurt them. I don't think all that much. Uh, their core audience is still going to, you know, be watching. And I, I fear the same is true of uh, however we feel about A and E or Cracker Barrel. For everyone that decides to boycott them now, um, there's going to be another in this hardcore um, far right fundamentalist Christian coalition. Uh, that's going to uh, probably make up for our loss. So I don't know that uh, you know boycotts are the answer always. I do think, however, we need to say what we think about it and let our reasoning speak for itself. That's how I feel. I'm Hawk. It's good to be with you again, and I look forward to seeing you again on a more regular basis. Um, Keep me in your thoughts. I could really use it because uh, right now I'm in a little scary situation looking for another job. So I appreciate you being out there. I think every video I post is, uh, you know, going to add a, hopefully a few pennies to the till. And I can use that too. So spread the word. Huck is back. Okay. Thanks. I'll see you again real soon.